Hey guys, Skatic Teague here, bringing you continuing coverage of the patch 2.5 PTS. In this video, we're going to take a look at the hangar. So this is where the nuts and bolts of your ship composition comes together, and you get to customize your ship. And there are tons of different things you can do. We will take a look at all of these different tabs that have all different sorts of options for you. And in the first one, we will see that ships is your first option. You have a choice between several different kinds of ships and different classes of ships. Right now in the PTS it only has Strike Fighter and Scout. When the game goes live it will also have Gunship and Bomber will be coming soon after that. There will probably be there will probably be a stealth type ship coming after that, just judging by some of the abilities like the ones we saw in the other videos uh, that reveal stealth. There is not a stealth class yet but probably will be one. So you can see all the different ships, they all look different, they have different primary weapons by default, and they also have different, you know, selectable options. Some of them you can obtain via cartel purchases, and now you may be saying, well, that's a little uh, pay to win-ish, right? Well, it turns out that the premium ships as you'll see here, this is a just regular ship and this is a premium ship, are just reskins of the existing ships. So you can see on the right here, heavy laser, quad laser, rapid fire, laser cannon, ion cannon, and this one also has the ion con cannon, heavy laser, quad laser, rapid fire cannon. So they are carbon copies, they just look different, which is fine. You know, they've been saying they want to sell customizable or uh, customization options as part of this and sell boosts, so we'll talk about that in a second. So you have your strike fighters, which are more your assassin type ships, get out there and dogfight. Your scouts are a little bit more tactical, they're faster, they're a little more nimble, they have, uh, they're more, uh, turret, killing turret based, they're a little bit more slippery in space, so harder to kill, I mean easier to kill, but harder to get in your sights. So we'll take a look at the Strike Fighter, because that's probably the class I'll be playing at start. You'll see down here, you can have five different ship loadouts. So, say I want to have one type of Strike Fighter set up, and a different type of Strike Fighter set up, maybe ones for uh, fighting against a bunch of heavy ships, maybe ones against fighting against a bunch of scouts. And you can switch any time you die, you can switch between any one of these preset groups here. You'll also see that I right now have times two, this is because I'm on the PTS and they're giving everyone a times two bonus so they can test things out more quickly. But one can assume that they will be selling boosts like that on the cartel market, which also is pretty standard for a free to play game. So we'll take the FT8 Star Guard. First, we'll look at components, if it will not bug out on me. Which, oh, because I have to first pick a ship. Alright, fine. We'll go with the preset and I'll look at the components of the preset. Now you'll see under primary weapons, this was the left click. You may remember in the first video I did, I had the rapid fire laser cannons. There are also quad laser cannons, and you'll see it has the range, the DPS, the weapon accuracy, and the weapon power draw. So the power draw is what ticks down the power that you saw on the left side. Uh, weapon accuracy is how accurate it is, DPS is, I think you know what DPS is if you're playing an MMO, and range is the range. Uh, you'll see the heavy laser cannons, a little bit longer range, a little bit more accurate, but and draws a little less, and it has a lower DPS, and then the ion cannons, which is a little shorter range, and it also does damage to both the shields, and different damage to the shields than it does to the hull. So that's if you want to be taking down the shields, takes them down really fast. One thing I did not show you is that the FT-8 Star Guard has two different primary weapons, so you can switch between these two weapons, and that is the number one ability on the Star Guard, is you can switch these weapons, so you get the option of having two different weapons. So if you want to have that Ion Cannon to take down their shields and then be able to switch to something else with a little higher DPS, then that is an option for you. Next up, secondary weapons, you'll remember I have the Missiles. You can also get the pro Proton Torpedoes and Cluster Missiles. Engines are the different engine abilities that you can do. You'll see Barrel Roll, which actually is not a barrel... Actually, the picture here is a barrel roll, but it just does an aileron roll. If you are familiar with how planes work, 
The classic barrel roll is not a real barrel roll. The power weapon power converter, so it transfers your engine's power to your weapon's pool, gives you some bonus there. And the retro thrusters accelerates the ship in reverse for a short duration, boosting evasion from direct fire. So all different kinds of engines you can get. And then you have the minor components, which, which is basically like the gear of your ship. So you have the range capacitor here, you have this damage capacitor, it gives you boosts there. Your magazines gives you regeneration boosts or magazine extender. Reactor is your shield, so minus shield regen delay gives you a regen rate. And finally, the thrusters, which are your engines, so engine power increase, turning rate modifier, etc., etc. Now, you may see on the right side, on all of these different upgrades here, they all have their own little talent trees on the right side. So as you continue to do more and more space, you will gain ship requisition and fleet requisition. Ship requisition is per ship, so if you're playing on the FT-8 Star Guard, you will receive ship requisition for the FT-8 Star Guard. Fleet requisition is a, on a fleet basis and is what you will use to purchase different ships and things like that. So if we are on here, the primary weapons, if I want to upgrade to the quad lasers, I need 5,000 of the ship requisition, so I need to be playing the FT-8 Star Guard a lot. And then on the right side, I have the rapid fire cannons. If I wanted to increase the blaster damage of the rapid fire cannons, I would need that much. And I would go down the talent tree, and these here, you can see they split, but they aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. You can end up getting everything on every ship, which is an important distinction. You cannot respec but you can just end up purchasing everything and having have a fully kitted out ship. Which is one of the things that worries me is the difference between a fully kitted out ship and a completely unkitted out ship. This is something developers have talked about. First 10 matches that you play against will be 8v8 against like skill. And they will also have a space rating, so they try and match who up with players of like internal rating. You won't be able to see that, there will be no leaderboards, but that's how they'll try and deal with that. So you'll see everything here has its own little talent tree. You cannot possibly, you know, get everything in a day. There's lots of stuff to upgrade. And you'll be testing out and tinkering all sorts of different uh, specs, I would assume. Try out different things, try out different shields, different secondary weapons, combos, primary weapons, etc., etc. Cosmetics. Now this will be probably the bulk of where Bioware makes its money. You can change the color of your blaster fire, as you can see right there. You can also change the other blaster fire that I have. And then change the color of your jets while you're doing your engine abilities. And then also change how your ship looks. So you'll see different paint jobs here. So that's different ways your ship can be painted. And then there are also, on top of that, different color options to change that. And some of them, obviously, Cartel market purchases, so that's 90. Less than a dollar for a different color. Which is pretty cool, in my opinion. I think they will make a lot of money that way, and I think people expected to pay more for kinds of customizations like that. Let's take a look at here. If I wanted to buy that, it's 1500 so that's a decent chunk of money just to buy that. This uh, cosmetic upgrade, this B-Wing looking thing, except not really a B-Wing. Next up is the crew. So you have, this is probably the most confusing, I'm actually going to do a video just on the crew. So if you want to see the crew, come back for that in my next video. And then finally you have your launch and on the left side it lists all the different options that you have. You'll see all the different things. And then you can enter battle. So you hit this and that will solo queue you and you hit group battle and that will queue you in a group of up to four. So if I hit that, you'll see the big red Q thing comes up. And you'll also see down here that this is the new hangar button, kind of like the Warzone and the Flashpoint button. Finally, the thing I want to show you is that subscribers here, you'll see uh, status subscribers, subscribers, and pass holders receive a significant boost to all requisition they earn in battles. So subscribers will be getting bonuses. Uh, ship requisition used to modify and upgrade currently selected ships only, like I discussed, and fleet requisition used to modify and upgrade ships in your hangar, as well as unlock ships cr and crew members. And then, 
probably the thing that will cause the most uproar is the fact that you can convert ship requisition to fleet requisition for cartel coins. And before you start screaming pay to win here, the thing with this is ship requisition is only for your ship. So if you want to switch from one ship to another that you haven't played at all, that's probably going to suck. So one thing they are selling is uh, boosts, like XP boosts. Another way for you to boost your ship is if you have one ship and don't want to really play it anymore, you want to play a different one, you can pay cartel coins to boost that ship up using the requisition you earned on a different ship. So it's kind of like if you could pay to transfer your level 50 from one class to another or something like that. And it's not its not even really like that. So I don't really see this as pay to win. I just think this is a convenience option. So I think a lot of players will actually appreciate this and realize that it's not free to play. So that's pretty much for the hangar. Check out my next video where I will be talking about the companions, which is a little bit more confusing, which is why it will get its own video. I hope you found this video helpful, and thanks for watching.